Charles, you're sitting on 10 years of consistent profit, uh, top line re re revenue, as well as market share growth. Uh, surely that must keep you awake at night. Uh, let's talk about the 11th, 12th, and 13th, and subsequent years going forward. So how are you going to maintain this, this, uh, this growth? Yeah, it's quite stressful doing my job. I didn't have any grey hairs when I started, and look at me now. Um, look, it's an amazing track record. And I think that there are very few companies in Malaysia, the region, or possibly even the world, that can boast a record like that. And I'm very proud to to be able to continue that into it was the seventh, eighth, now ninth, and now tenth year. And we're going to work incredibly hard to keep that track record going for for as long as we possibly can. And we think that we've got a great opportunity to do it. The way that we think about business is we, th we think primarily in three areas. We think about people, we think about brands, and we think about performance. And we think that if we get all of those three areas right, then you get into a self-reinforcing virtuous circle. People, the things on people is, you know, we believe that people are our greatest asset and that they can um, uh, do amazing things. So we try and create an environment where our people can fulfil their potential and can uh, create amazing activities like Arthur's Day, like our Oktoberfest that's coming up, um, our uh, marketing campaigns, um, but also working through our systems and processes, mm -hmm. systems and processes, brewing great beer and all of that, all of that stuff. So our people, we try to recruit and retain the best staff in Malaysia. We want to pay them well, we want to create an environment where they can uh, fulfill their potential. And then our brands. Our brands are like a football team. We've got players who cover different elements of the market and um, you know, Heineken, you know, very premium brand, sold in certain outlets. Then you've got Tiger, a little bit more mainstream, um, sold much more widely. Guinness, again, uh, a very mainstream uh, brand uh, enjoyed in coffee shops across the country, but also we've got the Guinness Draft uh, franchise now, which, you know, if, if Guinness was a, a um, it's mixing my metaphors, but if Guinness was a car brand, it would be like BMW, you know, you've got a 5 Series and a 7 Series, and they give, the Guinness Draft is a little bit like our 7 Series. So we've got... We've got brands that we try and keep as healthy as possible, as vibrant as possible, and then playing well together like a football team, all kind of uh, supporting each other, but also doing well on themselves. And then the third element of the mix is performance. And you know, there's part of the performance is about the result of performance, so it's about growing market share, it's about growing profitability. But, but also the bigger pit, bit for me is about the, the how of performance. It's about having great systems and processes, great disciplines, great uh, infrastructure. And uh, we, we work very hard to take from best in class, best global practices and apply them in Malaysia. So you know, our brewing processes are drawn from Heineken's best processes around the world. Our, HR processes are drawn from Diageo's, uh, the brand building processes are brought, uh, uh, drawn from uh, Diageo's. So, coming back, three areas, people, brands and performance, and we think that by working hard on each of those areas, in the areas that I've described and many others, we'll be able to keep our growth going. On the third leg of that, um, of that uh, little well, yeah. spiel, uh, Charles, 60% market share, you've got the competition law coming in, yeah. What does it mean in terms of uh, being under the cosh uh, once, it, once it legislates? Yeah, look, competition law isn't necessarily going to be a bad thing. Competition law, you know, first of all, we haven't seen the implementation guidelines yet. But secondly, you know, competition law is, uh, is introduced to promote competition and prevent abuse of a uh, dominant position. And... Uh, we believe that the malt liquor market is already very competitive. You know, we were talking earlier about the fact that GAB spends over $100 million a year on a &P, huge amount of money. You know, if we were, uh, we were enjoying a cosy market position, we wouldn't spend $100 million on a &P. So uh, we, we've got a very competitive marketplace. And uh, on top of that, you know, market dominance, you know, abuse of market dominance would be um, 
uh, under investing in our customers or in our uh, our brands or, or forcing customers to make decisions that, that aren't in their uh, best uh, advantage and uh, to an advantage to us and we just don't operate like that we work very very hard to be a great uh, business partner uh, with our suppliers and our customers and we've got a real service mentality in the business we want to uh, have a reputation for always going the extra mile for our customers. So I'm confident that GAB is in a, a in a position of market leadership. It deserves to be in that position because we've built our brands, we've built our systems, we've built our processes in such a way that we've earned that right and that when competition law comes in that we'll be able to maintain our position because you know, we're, we're a good company with you know, good ethics, good disciplines and a right to perform well. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Charles. Thank you.